Good morning, everybody. Mike Vaki, PrincetonTrader.com, here with your Wednesday market webcast. So, no webcast yesterday because honestly, we were trading CPI, and there's just way too many moving parts going on in the chat room to be to be um, hitting the record button and doing different things. Um, yesterday was an interesting day in that you had some decent short potential early off of CPI, uh, but then they turned that 24 to 26 area. Ended up being a nice long uh, 24s and then um, stalled out up high. We let it come in, um, ended up getting getting short uh, around the 48 area, brought it in really nicely into 06s. And then, you know, the bears go and, you know, trip over a blade of grass into the close, which is interesting. Um, it's, and it's something that they're fighting off this morning, and I think they'll be able to fight off successfully. And that is this. The shorts have to stop being so weak. They're scared bunnies in the backyard. You say boo, they cover. Okay? And they're content to cover. Let it lift up into the nine day, because look, nine day shuts it down. Nine day shuts it down. Nine day shuts it down. But what they need to do is they need to progress on the downside. They missed a real opportunity to engage lower band yesterday and really get a band ride going. Now, what you could get, and we've talked about this, not in the too distant past, is a secondary band ride, which is where you get a couple of days at a band. Usually it happens with the upper band. Um, it takes a day off and then it goes down and reaches and grabs that band and takes it. Those tend to run a ways, uh, a, a ways down or a ways up, depending on what you're talking about, because in this situation, you're down a couple of days. Hey, everything's gonna be okay. Everybody in, here we go. Nope, off we go. And on the lower low, people that got you know committed down here, like, okay, this is it, I'm planting my flag. They're all going to, you know, they're all gonna get stopped out. And that tends to run things to the downside. Works the same way in the inverse when we're talking about secondary upper band rides. Um, so hourly chart, Europe has done a very good job of rejecting uh, price two of the last three days. Done here, did it here. So you've got the nine day, 100 day exponential. You, you get the weekly pivot up here, which has really done a good job of holding things in, especially yesterday. That's where, that's where things tended to stop. Um, and again, bears have an opportunity to get back into this 38, 39 or below. If not today, then tomorrow. So we've got a lot of stuff out of our system, CPI, PPI, retail sales. Um, you've got the Fed coming up next week. In the interim, what you're left with, it's not really a vacuum. You were stuck in a vacuum with all this banking crap. And to the extent that stuff is going to rear its head, it's a lot of headline minefield stuff back and forth, back and forth. But as long as banks keep coming out with, you know, news that is difficult, to say the least, these rallies are going to continue to be sold. And if we're going to live under the nine day and we're going to live under weekly pivot, then we're not even really talking about things like the daily mid band, which we've already taken control of. So are there going to be rallies? Yes. You can be long the rallies. You can stand aside. Don't fight them short. You're better off getting out of the way. If you're just one of these people that just can't buy because you're a freaking perma bear and you just can't get over yourself to become a good enough trader, I'm sorry, but you know the truth is a bitch. To be a good enough trader to trade both sides of a tape, then you have to stand aside, not chew yourself up on the rallies, and you're going to have to wait until they're done. Not when you think they're done because you think every, every one minute candle that looks halfway toppy is the end. You need to wait for it to stall out, make a couple of lower highs, and come on in. That's basically what we did yesterday because we were long into this. I let it do this, and I let it do this. I went to the gym, whatever. And then when it starts to convert 50, it's like, okay, well, we'll get involved. Well, why did you wait so long? Well, because I wanted to be sure. Because if it's for real, you're going to get 40 points on the other side. It's, you know, everybody thinks they have no time to get in. You have all the time in the world to get in. It will always go much further than you think it's going to. And that especially applies to these little rallies, which if, if, if you are not in a mental place to trade both sides of the market, 
you will fight it, you'll add and add and add and add and add, and then you'll end up just, you know, getting out of your trade for nothing. So you got BlackRock out right now. Additional seizures could happen post SVB. Current environment similar to the SNL crisis of the 80s. I think that's about right. Um, and that goes back to what I just said. You're trapped in a vacuum with nothing but all this banking stuff. That's going to weigh on the tape. But either have the maturity to trade both sides of it or know that when it starts going in, the, in an upward direction with a little face ripper rally that you need to take your profits and just get out of the way. Sit on your hands, go take a walk, build a bridge. I don't care. But what you can't do is fight it short. That's the best piece of advice I can give you today. Okay? If it's going down, fine. But if you can't bring yourself to trade both sides, then you have to sit it out. Trading both sides doesn't mean, well, I'm short when the market's going down and I'm short in adding when the market's going up because I'm some amateur swing trader or whatever the hell you want to call yourself. That's a great way to make a big mistake because what will happen is at some point, somebody will say something, they'll cut a deal, something will happen and they'll really rip it for a few days and that'll nuke you. And I know the vast majority of the people that I'm talking to were not around in 08. That's what happened to a lot of people. Don't be them. Don't be them because they don't trade anymore. All right, so you got volume weighted average price 39.07, hourly mid 37, call it 36, right in there around the daily pivot. Um, proprietary moving average is at 91.5. Um, you know, it, it's it's a 99 handle Globex range. So you know, the low at 65 is going to be important. I wouldn't be surprised if we went up and, and gave uh, volume weighted average price a look. You know, right now we're short 88 after retail sales and PPI. We just have a runner left. We took, you know, 10 and a 20 there and we're just letting it work. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I got stopped out of that probably by the, you know, probably by the time you're watching this on YouTube because it needs to go test um, uh, 90 in the 91 area where our proprietary moving average is. 3,900 rejected off of the economic data at 830. That's going to be important. The best thing the bears can do for themselves is keep a 38 in front of everything today. Literally everything. That's how you control the day. That's how you control the day. All right. Have a good one. Take care. Trade them well. Talk to you tomorrow.